This is Robbie Schwarz with Built Tank Inc. And we're going to talk today about the two types of duct leakage testing that are involved with the International Energy Conservation Code. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the 2021 IECC because new to the 2021 IECC is a requirement to test for total duct leakage regardless of where the ducts are located. In the past, you only had to test for total duct leakage if any portion of that duct was located outside the building thermal envelope. So that you know, a simple way of thinking about ducts outside the building thermal envelope would be thinking about a piece of duct system that is in a ventilated attic, for example. If any portion of that duct was in a ventilated attic in the past, that's when you had to do your total duct leakage test. Now, regardless of if there are ducts in a ventilated attic or ducts inside the conditioned space of the house, you have to test for total duct leakage. Now, what is total duct leakage? Duct leakage that is happening all over the system. It's leaking inside the house, it's leaking outside the house. Wherever it's leaking, we're just trying to quantify how much air is actually leaking out of the duct that's connected to your furnace and air conditioning system. You're allowed to test either at a rough stage of construction or a final stage of construction. The requirement is that the house can't, or the duct system can't leak more than four CFM per 100 square feet of conditioned floor area. So let's talk quickly about what conditioned floor area is. Conditioned floor area is, is any space, any floor area that's inside the building thermal envelope that is being conditioned. So the big thing to think about is those spaces that are finished spaces versus unfinished space. Unfinished space would still be calculated within the conditioned floor area. So space inside of a furnace room or a conditioned basement that's not finished would also be considered conditioned floor area. When we're doing this total duct leakage test, we put a duct testing device like this one uh, and attach it to the return side of the duct system. Now the return side can be either at a large enough return that can see to the furnace cabinet and across the furnace cabinet where the furnace blower is located, or it can be connected directly at the furnace cabinet at the blower chamber there itself. Once we've connected it up to the system, we then go around the house and we block off all the supply and return openings. We need to tape those off at the surface that where it's penetrating through the drywall or the subfloor, whatever it's penetrating through, we're going to seal off at that location so that when we pressurize the duct system, we are ensuring that air isn't going to come out its known opening, the supply and return register, and air is going to leak out through any holes that are in the duct system itself. So it's a pretty simple test. We're using a known reference pressure to pressurize inside the duct in relationship to outside the duct. And then we're measuring the amount of air moving through the duct testing device, which in turn means that that's the amount of air that's flowing out of the duct system's holes. Now that we reviewed what total duct leakage testing is, let's go see it being done in the field. We are here doing a duct leakage test and each house is unique. So you have to decide where you're ultimately going to set up your duct blaster. You have to set up the system on the return side of the HVAC system. And I've chosen a large return uh, because the standard says that we can use a large return that has access to the, to the furnace cabinet as long as you have three or less returns in the house. Um, we decided not to test or to set up at the furnace cabinet itself in this case because there's some obstructions down low there, uh, but you can set up at, on the return side, the blower side of the furnace cabinet as well. Uh, so we've already taped off all the supplies and the returns. So we're, we're, we're blocking off any intentional opening in the duct system. If there is a ventilation system connected to the duct as well, you would need to block that off as well if it didn't have a mechanical damper that was doing that uh, automatically. So we're just gonna dive in now and, and talk about the actual test here. So we've set up the duct tester, we've plugged in the controller, 
Uh, now I need to orient the gauges to the test that we're doing. These gauges are, you're able to do a number of different types of tests. So you have to tell the gauge which actual uh, test you're doing. Uh, and uh, so we're going to tell it the device that we're using, which is a Duck Blaster B. We're using, in this case, we're using uh, Minneapolis Conservatory, Energy Conservatory, duct blaster equipment, but there are a variety of manufacturers of duct testing equipment. We also need to tell it the, what we're measuring on each side of the gauge. So these gauges have two channels. We're going to be measuring uh, flow on one side and pressure on the other side of the gauge here. So we need to set that up as well here. So this tube is, this clear tube is connected to the um, pressure tap on the supply side of the system so that we know that we're getting a consistent 25 pascals on the supply side of the system. In essence, we're pressurizing the entirety of the system uh, together. So we're measuring pressure and we're measuring pressure inside the duct in relationship to outside the duct. So I'm putting the pressure tap on the input side and leaving the reference tap open to the house here. Uh, and this tube is connected to the duct tester and we're actually measuring pressure at the duct tester itself, which will be translated into a CFM or cubic foot of per minute number, a flow number. So we're putting that on the input as well here. And then I'm setting up my gauge to measure pressure on this side and flow at 25 on this side of the gauge. These are smart gauges, so they're able to determine if I can't actually reach 25 pascals of pressure inside the duct, it will measure as if I were exactly at 25 pascals of pressure. So we can turn on our duct testing device now, and we are going to uh, try to achieve 25 pascals of pressure and the gauge is basically helping me understand if I need to add a ring or not. I, I'm not able to get to 25 pascals of pressure so um, I'm going to use a little bit bigger ring here. So we have a measurement now, and I always take a picture of the measurement so that I know I have that for my records. So we've wrapped up our duct leakage test, and I just wanted to recap with you what we did. So we arrived at the house and we decided where we're going to install the duct testing device. Uh, I decided to install at a large return because this house had three or fewer uh, returns that had good access across the furnace cabinet that's behind me here. You could also set up directly at the furnace cabinet uh, in the blower compartment there, but this, this particular one isn't set up on a filter box and it was really hard to access and tape off cleanly there. So this was for this house, this was the best location. Uh, you also want to decide if you want to test at a rough stage of construction or a final stage of construction. In this example, we're testing at a final stage of construction. And the drawback to that is that if the system is leaking more than four CFM per 100 square feet of conditioned floor area, we are not going to pass our code compliance test and it's much more difficult to uh, seal the system. Whereas at a rough stage of construction, I can still get my test passing but if it doesn't pass, I have access to the ducts and I can actually uh, direct air sealing to that duct uh, directly there. Uh, you also need to decide if you're going to pressurize or depressurize the system. Personally, I like to pressurize the system because you have the ability to add theatrical smoke uh, to the system and make holes in the ducts visible there. Uh, others like, especially at a, a final stage, like to depressurize the system because in essence it helps suck your taping of your supplies and returns uh, to the supply and return cover instead of having the potential of blowing that tape off of the system. So we did our test, we oriented our gauge to the equipment that we are testing with. We're, we're introducing 25 pascals of pressure into the duct in relationship to outside the duct. 
uh, using the, the fan here to blow air into the duct. It, it's able to pressurize because I've blocked off all those known openings, all those supplies and returns. I have to try to get at least 25 pascals of pressure inside the duct in relationship to outside the duct. And I measure that on my A channel of this particular gauge. There are different manometers out there, pressure measuring gauges out there. This smart gauge is enabling me to measure at 25 pascals and it's smart enough to take the flow, which I'm measuring with this red tube at the duct tester here and translate it to a flow number as if I were at 25 pascals of pressure there. It's a pretty simple, straightforward test. Generally, it takes more time to actually set up the device and tape everything off than it actually takes to do the test. But it's a super important test because we have done what's called an HVAC design on the house. We've done a manual J, which is our heat load and cooling load for that house. We've done a manual S to select the equipment that meets the load, has the capacity to meet that load. And we've done a manual D, which is designing the duct system in that house and telling uh, this in the software, we are determining how much airflow is needed to each room in order to properly heat and cool it. And if my ducts are leaky, I'm not going to get the proper airflow to each room. That's one of the key components there. It's not only an energy penalty, but it's a comfort issue and potentially a building durability issue, depending on uh, where that leak is actually happening in the house there. So we're finished with our test and our demonstration today. So I'm going to break down the equipment and untape all the ducts and put the house back into the condition that I found it. So thanks for your time.